Welcome to a new video on Ocean Leaf. We know it's been a long time, but here we go again with Microsoft Intune News of 2024. And this time I've brought uh, Niklas, the other Niklas, with me. <laughs> He's a student ambassador and also very involved into the Intune topics. Uh, maybe, Niklas, you want to say some words about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Niklas and I'm 21 years old. I'm a student ambassador, as, as Niklas mentioned earlier. Um, and yeah, the fun fact about me and Nicholas is that we nearly are spelled uh, the same way and are the same age as well. So yeah, it's uh, very nice to be here. <laughs> Good to have you here. Yeah, we all know it. Intune is probably one of the fastest evolving products. What does this mean? It basically means that we have new features on a on a regular cycle, so monthly or even weekly. And it's really a lot going on in the product and it's really hard to stay up to date. Just having here a view at the what's new page. So I collected all the topics which were announced by Microsoft from just the half year one of 2024. And you see there's so much going on. We have so many new features. Of course, Intune Suite was one of the larger points here, but also we can now greet a co-pilot in Intune. Security was a big topic, but also on the general foundation of Intune, a lot is going on with new technical features like config refresh or new security baselines. So Microsoft is really filling us up with, with new information. And this re video is really here to essentially summarize the important stuff and also bring you some highlights of ourselves and to talk about it. So let's get started with the first one, which is Autopilot V2. Yeah, so as Niklas said, uh, Autopilot V2 or uh, device preparation as, as Microsoft are saying. Um, so what is actually new in Autopilot V2? So just to name some of it, um, it's cloud only, and there is also a maximum of 10 applications, and it supports scripts to be run during Autopilot as well. And I think one of the biggest headaches that were with Windows Autopilot was that you had to register a hardware hash. Um, and one of the new things with Autopilot V2 is that you don't need the hardware hash anymore you actually just need the corporate device identifier. Um, and as well as it's a simpler process, it's also a lot more reliable and predictable as well. Um, the end user experience has really been a little bit better, at least I would say. Um, and there's other great things such as uh, the speed of the deployment, enrollment time grouping, uh, and it's also now including quality updates during autopilot, which is pretty nice as well. And when Microsoft are talking about security, this is really the, the step in the right direction as well. So what does it actually mean? So when we are talking about Autopilot V2 or device preparation, um, I think that you should think about Intune once more. If you were thinking that Windows Autopilot was a showstopper before, um, I would think I would say that you should take a look at device preparation and, and see if it can, can help you uh, and your business as well. And some other great things as well, the Intune Suite. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of it as well. So uh, let's take a look at some of the capabilities in the Intune Suite. So to just, I'll just quickly run through all of them. So we have the remote help, we have endpoint privilege management, endpoint analytics, enterprise app management, tunnel for mobile app management, cloud PKI, speciality device management and just to to name some of my favorites i i love the endpoint privilege management it supports both msi and exe files as well um and i think my nicholas's favorite is probably reporting so endpoint analytics as well is, is really a great addition and it's helped us be proactive um as an it admin as well and enterprise app management helps us stay on top of um, patching of software as well. So well, how can we actually compare those? So without Intune Suite, we, we are doing manual patching or at least using a third party product. With enterprise app management, everything is merged into the Intune portal. So this makes sure that everything is uh, up to date. Um, it, it requires minimum effort from you as an IT admin. It's integrated in the catalog with Microsoft Store apps. As you know from Microsoft Store apps as well, it has the same design. Um, then we have Microsoft Cloud PKI versus internal PKI or local infrastructure. 
Um, and with Microsoft Cloud PKI is no maintenance of local infrastructure, less attack surface, and everything integrated as well with the other products in the Intune suite. Remote help, um, basically a very easy tool in order to assist your users directly from the Intune portal. Um, it only requires you to deploy the application to the end users. Um, and secondly, we have endpoint privilege management, a secure way to execute your apps um, and also a single pane of glass experience. And lastly, we have the tunnel for mobile app management, um, basically a VPN solution for your mobile devices. So that was a little bit about the Intune suite. So Niklas, Mac management. Yes, when I heard Intune uh, is now fully supporting Mac, uh, I immediately changed on macOS. <laughs> no, um, I think macOS management was really one of the key points in 2024. And it's really important to talk about it because also when we have a look historically at it, uh, Intune came out of a, of a one platform, a single platform, of course, their own platform of Microsoft, it's Windows. It was designed to manage Windows and even the name was partly of it. <laughs> so in 2015 to 2020, we had some uh, time of transition, but I think really starting with this year with all the great uh, features of macOS management, such as platform SSO, <clears throat> which goes deeply into the macOS and Apple universe, uh, we're, we're really seeing a multi or a, a cross-platform management solution with Intune, which really makes me proud. Also, when we have a look at uh, the capabilities of Intune and macOS, we've seen a lot on the roadmap, map, uh, which is actually on the next slide. <laughs> and uh, we see that uh, Microsoft is heavily investing in, in new features here. And we also see that still something or some stuff is coming. This is already a bit an outdated slide here. But you see, it's just important to see that uh, so many things are going on here. And uh, we really see that Microsoft is serious about Mac management with Intune. Now, if you want to get started with the Mac management in general, I think uh, first uh, suggestion would also always be to, to have a look at some blogs. For example, I did one on Kickstart Mac OS management with Intune. It's really, really simple. If you have the Intune license already for your users, you basically just need some configuration steps in Intune. You need a connection between your uh, your Apple push certificates or Apple Business Manager or School Manager uh, School Manager uh, between them and Intune. Then you create your basic profile, same processes as from the other operating system, which is super easy and sleek. And then you can onboard your Mac in some different ways. So really, really simple and really cool feature. But let's talk about one more thing, which is actually one of my highlights, which is Defender Endpoint Security Settings Management, because this is a new era of, uh, of configuration management in my eyes. Now, what is it? Defender for Endpoint um, Security Settings Management basically gives you the option to configure system settings, so security-related system settings through a separate channel but in the end, it's coming also from Intune. This is also why we are not now talking about it. Some example use cases here would, for example, be to configure systems that are in the cloud or you don't have any configuration options or are maybe in your demilitarized zone. Also, it supports Windows Server. So you can now apply all those great security settings, for example, in Defender, in Firewall, ASR rules, and so on, directly out of the cloud, directly with Intune. Super simple, super cool. Now, just a little look at the architecture. This is a picture by Microsoft. It basically tells us that we have some relation and some processes going on between the Defender service, between Intune and Entry-D. In the end, what we need is we need some kind of management experience or management plane, which is in this case Intune. There we configure our policies, but we also get that configuration view from out of uh, from out of MD. Now, when you want to configure a device, you of course need some synthet or some identity for it, and this happens through a synthetic uh, registration of an ID object. So basically, if you onboard a a device, an endpoint, that it be a client or a server to this whole security settings management, it will create an ID object for it, and you can this you can use this one to. Uh, add to groups or to assign directly 
uh, to the policies that you configure. Just some of the field notes here. I really love this feature because it lets you kickstart the whole security management with minimum effort. So basically, if you have some servers and you don't want to do any GPOs anymore, or you can not even do GPOs because maybe the servers are not in the domain or whatsoever, then it's really a great feature to get everything rolling. Also with MMPC, um, we see a lot of faster targeting and a, a better architecture in general, and uh, it's really faster. So if you create policies, if you apply them, if you change them, the general feeling, it all feels better. Make yourself some, some uh, thoughts about it and also have some field experience because you will really see that it's a, a cool thing. But also be careful because now all devices will now also include the ones MD managed. So have a, a, a consideration about that. Otherwise, you will maybe also impact devices that you don't want to impact intentionally. Okay, so that's our feature highlights. Now, how do we stay up to date with so many new features coming besides subscribing to this channel and reading all the blogs on oceanleaf.ch? Sure. <laughs> maybe you want to make us one of your uh, ideas here. Yeah, so of course, there's a lot of great possibilities in order to stay update, updated as well. Um, of course, you could read Niklas' book if you would like to do that. But um, if you would like an in-person experience, you could um, go to the Workplace India Summit, uh, the MEM Summit, MMS, um, other community conferences as well. Um, there is also a great YouTube channel called Into Training as well. And in your, if you're looking into joining, an online community. Um, the Microsoft EMS community is also an op opportunity on Discord. Um, and I think if you're looking for more official ways, there is, of course, the what is new in Microsoft Intune um, tech community. Um, and also to, to see what's new and in development as well. That's also a possibility on the documentation. Um, there are some Twitter accounts. Um, from the into team and I also think there is one for the defender team as well um, and of course the most important thing is to set up your test and then try out the new features I mean hands-on experiences is, is just the best way of learning and, and I, I think if you haven't a test if you don't have a test engine yet I think you should definitely get one um, and of course more learning part I know my, my head is uh, blocking this one a little bit but um, two certifications that you could think about is the SC900 and the MD102 as well. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of great possibilities in order to stay updated. Yeah, exactly. So thank you so much for watching this video. This was a real quick uh, wrap up of our highlighting features and everything you should know what's new and also how to stay up to date. Now it's about you, get your tenant ready and configure all those new great things. And uh, we'll see us in the next video. Thank you so much and bye.